Hello, welcome to this tutorial where I will be teaching you how to properly incorporate top-down movement into your game. This is going to fix the diagonal movement error, or problem I guess you, yeah problem, not, it's not really an error, it's a problem, uh, where you move faster uh, when you're moving diagonally. So you'll move horizontally and vertically at say speed of 4, but then when you move diagonally uh, that speed increases because it's almost adding them together. Um, I'm going to explain what it's actually doing, it's not really adding them because you're not really going at a speed of 8 when you do that. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go into detail. So here we go. So far, all I have set up is the uh, the uh, controls. So this is just a script. You can import the script. You don't have to do the script, but this is what I type. Um, I normally use this because uh, it really saves time. I don't want to keep entering the same information all over again. So if you're a beginner, I would recommend learning about scripts. If you want, I can do another tutorial on those. But for now, uh, just copy this, make a script, call it script input and then uh, enter this information. This will let you use the WASD keys to move around. That's all we're going to need for right now. Okay, so when you're done creating your script, I want you to go into the create event of your character or player and start defining our variables. We're going to use SPD for speed, and we're going to follow the example we did earlier with four. Next, we're going to need to uh, set a default speed for our horizontal and uh, vertical speeds. So we're just going to use h speed for horizontal speed and set it to zero because we don't want the player to instantly start moving horizontally at any speed when you start the game. And do the same thing for vertical speed. Next, head in your step event and import your script. Do this by putting in the name of your script followed by parentheses and a semicolon. It's very important you have the semicolon. Now let's start actually incorporating movement. We're going to do this by setting h speed equal to your right key minus the left key. So this basically means that when they push the right the right key, it will increase their speed, but if they push the left key, it's going to subtract it to equal to zero, or vice versa. This is going to control whether you're moving positively to the right or negatively to the left. Do the same thing for v speed, but instead flip it around, where your negative down key is on uh, it comes first. When you're done with that, we need to actually change the player's position. So let's set the x of the player already in the in the player object, so we don't need to define uh, or define sorry, like object player. We don't need to do that. We're already in there. So just set x plus equals h speed times your speed. So whatever this value is, whether it's positive or negative, it's going to multiply it by. Uh, whatever you set your speed to be. In our case, it was four. So uh, this will be a value of uh, zero, one, or negative one. If you push right, it's going to add. It's going to be one. So one times four, it's going to increase your x by four. And vice versa if you're pushing left. Now do the same thing for your y. Y plus equals v speed times speed. And there you go. So now when you go in, you should be able to move around. So now we're in our game, and you can see that I can move left and right and up and down at a pretty constant speed, the speed of four. But when I decide to start moving diagonally, you see it moves much faster. We can fix this with simple math. I want you to head back into your create event and add a new variable. Call it walk speed and set it equal to speed. This is just going to be uh, the default speed. Next, go back into the step event and create a new note. Call it diagonal movement. We need to check and see if the player is moving diagonally. To do this, let's say if v speed is not equal zero and H speed is not equal to zero, meaning they're moving both vertically and horizontally, that's what a diagonal movement is, then set speed equal to dag speed. We haven't set dag speed up yet, but um, we'll, I'll go into that in a minute. I'm going to have to explain it. Else, meaning if they're only moving horizontally or only moving vertically, 
set speed equal to walk speed. This is the variable we set up earlier. This is kind of the default speed. Okay, so first I'd like to explain what's happening when you're actually moving diagonally. To do this, I've made a triangle. When you move horizontally at a speed of four, you're actually going a distance of four. Each of these little dashed lines are one unit in this scenario. So if you're moving at a speed of four or a distance of four, both horizontally and vertically, then the distances or lengths of the sides of the triangle, side A and side B, are also four. To figure out the third side, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Doing this, we find out that this third side, moving diagonally, is closer to 5.6. Well, we need to make it so no matter what we enter uh, into our speed values or our distance, um, we can multiply this number, the result, the DAG speed, um, by something to make it the same as the normal speed. We can do this by changing the number to be, or, or multiplying the result by the square root of 2 divided by 2. Um, this is the ratio of a special triangle. And we could also use 0.707, but um, GameMaker has square root functions, and I think it's always better to be more precise. So now let's head back into GameMaker and see what we can do. Okay, so now we're back in GameMaker in the create event of our player object. Let's create a new formula for DAG speed. We know that we need to multiply the length of side A or B, the horizontal or vertical speed, which is set to four in this case, by the ratio of a special triangle. That is the, uh, the square root of two divided by 2. Let's multiply that number by speed. And there's our formula. So another issue you might have is when you're doing this and you have a really high number, you could actually end up with a decimal at the end. This wouldn't be good if you're trying to have a speed of say 16, but uh, your diagonal speed is turned into 15.56. Or, or three, two, you know, whatever. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna round whatever value it gives us, and that will make sure that uh, no matter what the number is, it will always round up and be the same as speed. So now let's go ahead and try it out. We can move horizontally and vertically and the speed is not any different when we move diagonally. Congratulations. You just properly incorporated diagonal movement into your game. Thanks for watching.